Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Probably not a big surprise for you, another Chrysler product in the bay. I should uh, change this to the Chrysler Channel. It's not a Jeep this time, it's a 2015 Dodge Journey. It's got the big 3.6 in it. Uh, it was towed in from another shop. It is a no start, no crank, no nothing. Nothing works, headlights work. Um, essentially it's like not having the key turn. Everything that works without your key being turned on works. Now this is a push button start. Uh, I'm going to show you what's happening. What happens inside this little fella here. Now, we had already looked at this just uno momento, but before you would get in and the dash would light up like this, but when you hit the, you know, button here, you know, nothing. You got nothing. Just like we do right now. We have nothing. And uh, regardless of, you know, where you're at with the key and, and all this stuff. So it's actually broke again. Fantastic. That's actually good because that's what we wanted. So now the car is broke. And you know, you can see, you know, you have dome lights. We'll look out on the toolbox. We've got no wipers, but we have headlights out there, you know, high beams, all that stuff. Everything lights up in here. So it appears everything is working except for the fact, you know, we've got nothing going on here. So I guess right now we're right back to where we started. I'll tell you right now, the vehicle has a blown fuse and they're special little fuses. I don't know what they're called, but they're these little these little dinky guys. Uh, kind of a narrow spacing on them. Uh, fortunately, I had some. Where do we go to see why you know it won't turn on? Uh, I just went on wiring diagram. We'll pull that up uh, and look at that. So I just looked at the starter circle. What's it take to start this car? Turn it on. You know, I know it has the wireless ignition node, the ignition module, the little button that you push. But where does it go from there? What's it need to see? I don't get too fancy here, but I'll. Uh, See if we can find the uh, starting circuit right here. And this should give us some clues. So over here, let me enhance, enhance, enhance. How do we uh, move that over? Okay. So there we are. So here is our wireless ignition node. So that's our, that's our little push button inside. Uh, it does have some data lines going to it and it has a power and a ground and two data lines and then it goes to, the two data lines go to this uh, radio frequency hub and then from there they go back on to the network. So now that we know that, I thought to myself, as itself, maybe we should just check the fuse it runs at just to keep it simple. You know, maybe the fuse is blown or it has lost power and of course I've already gave away the secret, this fuse is blown. So we stuck a new fuse in there and started the car up and the car starts and runs. So let's go there because I, the fuse is obviously smoked again but then we're at the point with, uh, you know, where you're at. A lot of times with the blown fuse is why did the fuse blow? And that's what I wanted to know because I think it's kind of odd that if this here runs what seems to only be this, uh, you know, ignition node module, uh, you know, according to this diagram, that's what it runs. It doesn't seem like that's gonna spank a 15 amp fuse. Right now we are in the passenger side footwell. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see, but right up here, so this is the passenger side footwell. That's where like your right foot would rest. There's a fuse box up under here and uh, you're laying on the lid right now, so I can't show you, but it said fuse 121, 15 amp. Came in here with a test light and checked the fuse. And indeed it was blown, so I just took it back out here. And that fuse has gone corrupt also. Now we've only got, I do not have a fuse box adapter for this. We could probably use something out of our U-Test kit uh, for sure, which we will do if we blow one more fuse, but we will, we will take one of the four fuses. I, like I said, I have no idea what they're called. That is the, uh, where are you guys at? That is the napper number on them. Not a sponsor, uh, kind of an odd little guy. I had them in stock for some reason. I must have ran across this once before in a previous life. So we're gonna stick this up in the hole. Uh, let's see, we probably, you know what, i tell you what, because we want to know what the current draw is on it. Let's, uh, let me make a little adapter for us. Right, so I got us a couple of adapters out of our AES Wave U test kit. They should be the same size terminal here. I'm going to take my hat off. I don't know if I can see up in there. Now well, let's see. Oh, <laughs> it feels like I'm in, but I'm certainly not. There's one half of it, and then we'll get the other half. Then we'll just short these together with a paper clip. Look for the smoke. 
There's the other half. Okay, so we should be in the fuse now. We're not going to use the paper clip. <laughs> not yet. I'm just going to run it through my DVOM because that's protected by a 10 amp circuit. So that should be okay. Technically, I didn't hear anything explode. All right, let me just uh, get you guys moving around here. If you guys that are interested, this is the lid for that fuse box. Like I said, we were on. I don't know which one we we're on, 121 it said, so wherever uh, wherever that is, right? So that's it, I can't do two things at once here. I am a man, 121. Uh, what do they call that, K-I-N, so whatever. So that's that, and that lid is up under there in that portion. So I'm gonna lay down there, get old trusty back on. That's not its official name, but. Okay, here we are, let me uh, get the kickstand out on this little guy for us. Like I said, this is protected by a 10 amp fuse right here in the back of the tool, so it's a little little lower than our rating, but should be sufficient for what we're doing. Right now we are drawing 0 0.01 amps. I suppose we can just change our scale here. We'll put it on a 10 amp scale. Okay, and our button now works. Our amperage draw is still nothing. You know what, I'm gonna make damn sure our wires aren't touching under there. If I unplug this, our light here should go out. And it did. Okay, see that, our light, our run light is on. I'm gonna hook it back to my meter. And our light is back on, okay. I just wanted to make darn sure that where I put my adapters in there, they're not doing this little number. It just seems like a wicked low amperage draw. No, something's wrong here. It's got to be accurate. I pulled the fuse out of the back of the little tool here. The 10 amp fuse and it does cut the circuit. So that is legit. I'm going to leave a long time basis on the screen here. I'll put on just two minutes across the screen. It's just odd that we're at 1.1 milliamp and you know, it doesn't change. That is super weird. And now the car starts and runs, so you know that's good. We got no other funky lights on. That is a really, really low current draw. I would have expected something else here. Interesting. next million dollar question is you know what does this fuse run it's pretty bizarre that it is 15 amps and then you can see we're drawing what 1.3 milliamps with nothing it's got to be more than this little rigmarole here so we're going to go back out of here and we're going to go to power distribution and we know that it's fuse 121 so we're going to try to find that that is right there fuse 121 so we'll go to diagram four see intense, intense. Wouldn't be an SMA video without the air compressor running, would it? Find fuse 121, fuse 121 right here. You guys in the screen? Fuse 121. 15 amp. Ah, so it shows two circuits out of it. This circuit here and this circuit here. So it goes to the keyless ignition node module and it also goes to the radio frequency hub module now this radio frequency hub module is responsible for me listening those are my claw hands using quotes listening for the key um, you know for the proximity sensing around the vehicle I believe it's responsible for the key within the vehicle and this little guy lives back in the headliner in the rear of the vehicle it took me a while to find that sucker I bookmarked it uh, Let's see here. Here's my bookmark. I'll show you where this thing lives. Module radio frequency. That's why I couldn't find it when I was searching for it, but it lives way back here in the headliner. Uh, not knowing what originally blew the fuse, I just want to do visual inspection, just see if anything looks funky. I already tried, you know, 
where the push button is, I tapped around that and pushed on it and tweaked it and everything else and didn't see any change in amperage. I wanted to go look at this, just have a look, because I see it's got this weird little shark fin thing up on the back of the car that's all loose. So I don't know if that was responsible for something, but let me show you where I'm at. Da, 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 da. So there's that thing there. I don't know if that's factory, and I don't have another journey to look at. Well, let me close this hatch down here. Close that down. And then there's this thing. It's kind of like half stuck on there, but it does not look factory. Now, it may be, but maybe not. So, you know, that was giving me some concern. You know, I, I don't know if it's XM or whatever it is, but at any rate, how do we open this thing? Let me find the little donger here, fellas. Found my donger. <laughs> He's got a big old cow catcher on the back. Look at that. I look up in here. I've just popped this little cover off. I look up in here, and there's the module. And what do we see? Oh, is that an add-on extra red wire to the red wire that goes back here that runs the fuse? Well, it looks like it is. So I'm going to give it the old tape job. And I don't know what that is. But I do see, when I just glance up here in the headliner, it runs this direction. You can see the wire in there. And that runs towards the front of the vehicle. And that's about as far as I've gotten. So it is some kind of aftermarket add-on crap. Now I see up in the front there, if you guys can see it, enhance. See that wire running down in the mirror, the black wire? That's some kind of aftermarket mirror gizmo, which is a backup camera, which when I come out here, I see this, which I don't think is OEM. I don't believe that is OEM. So I'm wondering if there's something gone wonky here with that and they tied in the power to it. So that's where we're at, and that's, I think, what we need to investigate is that wire. Maybe I'll just reach up here and give her a little twinkle with my fingers. And we'll watch our meter up there. You know what? I think I just seen a little hitch and it's giddy up. Do I got my meter running backwards? I may have. Okay, so I've got our meter hanging off the back of the seat. Um, I'm going to set you guys on a tripod and I'm going to reach up in there and give her a few little flicks and twists and see if we capture anything. Got you guys set up. Now I know you can't see the meter because of the glare, but I just want you to see what I'm doing. Just going to kind of wiggle around up here. And where the reverse lights are down there. I have no idea what this wire is at this point. items. I can't really reach that. Let's get this whole get caboodle right out of the way here. There's airbags in this roof, so set that to the side. Aw, look at those. Two little things. Staining on this. And the nuts loose on the one side. If somebody, uh, if somebody's been back here. I wonder if that's water stain. I don't see any water stains. Oh, I do see water stains on the roof. Oh, come on back here to my party, boys. Stuff out of our way. Oh my gosh, I can't do all of this stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see. Focus. Is that not focusing? What in the world is going on? Okay. So we come across the roof. Yes, these are water stains. That line right there. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and the water stain goes all the way over to here. So maybe Mr. Sharkfin. Yeah, those are all water stains. I don't know if they're showing up on camera. Okay. 
now we're on to something. Maybe it has nothing to do with the aftermarket crap. Maybe it has everything to do with Mr. Shark Fin up on the roof. Because, whereabouts is that located? Right here in the middle. Shark. All I can do is sing baby shark song now. <laughs> Let's, uh, I tell you what, let me get some of this uh, trim down here a little bit and see if we can't lower this down. Now, I don't think it's a good idea, whatever aftermarket gizmo they have tied into this. It's, you know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be there, obviously, but I think our module is uh, going to be wet on the inside or corroded. Let me just try tapping on it, see if, can't really, look at the tapping apparatus. Nothing happening there. Nothing happening there. Well, amperage draw isn't going haywire. Uh, and that fuse is hot at all times, so this module should be powered up. We gotta get down to where we can get to it more. She looks wet. So this is not this old girl's first rodeo. I popped a little cover off so I can see the screw. Now there's another one inside here, and I see that the plastic is all mangled up around that screw. And I also noticed when I popped the cover off the headliner, it only had one retainer in it, uh, which I thought was weird. And the fact that that module is laying in there kind of loose gives me reason to believe that. Uh, this is not the first time, but uh, so I'm going to get the bolts out of it. We've got to take the seatbelt bracket off there, where the seatbelt looks on up here. And get this down where we can see it. Yeah, and these were originally a Loctite. That was not very tight. Oh, Houston, we may have a problem. So I've got this side trim off here. Let me just set my stuff here so I don't lose it. But I don't want to touch this because I may. I, let me tell you what, that thing is a pain in the ho-hoo for working on back here because it's about that far away. And you got to climb up in here. People on that stupid dog. Okay, where did I see it? So let's have a gander right there, folks. So them are the red wires. Do you see what I see? You see what I see. Send the mechanic to the little people watch. I think that wire might be rubbed through right there. Possibly. Let me unenhance. Now let's do this. Let me come on out here. Why is that guy always mowing long? Like every day. Alright, now can you guys see? Okay. Now you guys are focused on that. I'm gonna reach up in here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna twinkle this wire just a little bit. Just give her a little brush in my finger. There's a lot of excessive moaning in this video. Get out your dollar bills, ladies and gentlemen. It is amateur hour at SMA. I should have questioned myself. I should have said self. Why is it only drawing one milliamp when we know that's like impossible? Well, you see the little thing up here that says amps internal? And you'll notice probably on a previous screen it said low amps. That's because I don't know how to set up a meter. So this is my fault. So now we are set correctly. And Jason, my assistant, uh, just a minute folks here, I need to move you. Let me stick a bolt under the camera so I can have my light back. Hold on. You'd think I'd, have to, I'd know how to do this stuff by now, but I don't. Don't let anybody lie to you. Hold on, there you are. No, there you're not. All right, that's the best you can get. I got you propped with the seatbelt bolt. Now I want to reach up here and wiggle these wires. Go ahead and close the gate down slowly. Okay, keep it right there. We should see if I wiggle this wire just like so. Are we going to get a spike in amperage? Well, oh, what was that? Seven something? It went too high. But that is definitely going to be our problem. I feel like I'm whispering right in your ear. Let's just go to a different time. Let's get 10 seconds on our screen. Let's crank her up to the 20 amp scale. Oh, we only got 10 because that's as high as it goes. Should have been my first clue. 
freaking ding dong. Okay, hold that gate right there. Let give her the old classic reach around. Whoa, hey, look at that. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh, never mind, she just blew the fuse. So that's it. That's our problem, ladies, where these wires run through. So right up there, you see where they ran the wires through for the aftermarket garbage? So this is an installed problem. Yeah, there you go, now you can see that wire. Let me enhance. Hold on, I'll give you guys vertigo. She is rubbed because, it, go ahead and open the gate all the way, Jason. See how it pulls in wires? Now set the gate down. And then it tweaks that whole harness. So it's been sitting there just chafing over the years. Go ahead and let it back up. There's your problem, lady. So now the million dollar question is, how do you fix it? Well, I'm gonna show you. You take the power wire that they jammed in there and you chop it off. And you leave it laying back above the headliner. I'm not gonna have aftermarket garbage come haunt me on a repair by you know, doing whatever we have to do to fix the wire here. You know, they have them, you know, running through the gate up through here. None of the wires are protected or in the loom, so they can just chafe and rub through on the body. And I can only imagine it's that way on this side, too. So the most feasible option, or the best option, I'll stick that back in in a minute, is to just disconnect it. This should not be tied into a module, let alone one that's going to leave you stranded. Uh, in the event that it shorts out, which it did just for an aftermarket backup camera. So this is just a you know crappy install gone wrong. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I know you guys really ride me hard when I take customers um, aftermarket stuff and take it out, particularly when it's causing a drivability complaint or you know a no start. You know, I probably take out a couple remote starts a month because it leaves people stranded and causes security issues. So I just take them out, I don't install them. Can this stuff be installed properly? Absolutely. Uh, it takes time. And it's kind of bizarre, I was just telling Jay, I said I can't believe somebody took the time to, you know, chase wires all the way through a headliner, you know, all the way to the front to install a backup camera, and then, you know, decides to use a wire way up in here for a power source, which I thought was weird because there's, you know, if you're gonna tap into some wires, man, there's lots of wires in here that you can tap into that are easier to get to. Not that that's appropriate, I'm just saying, if you're gonna do a hack job, I would do it down here somewhere or over there, uh, something like that. But that's how I'm gonna fix this one because I don't want the car coming back to get me. Now, we're questioning about the water. Uh, I'm gonna discuss this with my customer. I flipped up uh, this uh, little trunk here and stuff, and I don't see where water is making it all the way down and in and through, so, I'm going to ask him about baby shark fin on the roof uh, to see if he's had any water issues back here. Perhaps this is an old, uh, you know, old stains, something like that. I don't know, but I definitely see some white crusties on the side of that module. So uh, I'm going to question him about that. I think that perhaps there's more problems with this radio frequency module simply because when you have the key in the car, you have to have it in the cup holder in the front in order for it to be recognized. So I don't believe the interior antennas are working as they should. Now the outside ones are. Uh, I did test the proximity sensors and they're about six feet away from the vehicle. Uh, it detects the key, so that's good. But interior, uh, it doesn't seem to be functioning, which could be you know, results of, of this being you know, waterlogged or starting to be on its way out. Appears to be high and dry on the inside, despite a little bit of water staining up in that corner. Best I can see on this side of the circuit board, it looks pretty dry though. I don't see any gobbly gook on the back side either. Well, yeah, folks, the old Dodge lives to die another day. Uh, aftermarket gizmo causing the problem. That part's fixed. Now, we did see water on that uh, radio module. I noticed once I had that module down, Baby Shark that lives up on the roof has no uh, attaching hardware to it inside the vehicle. It looks like it's just an empty thread or it must be some kind of you know, bolt or something that holds that on. So I am gonna recommend that he gets that. And I see one of the antenna wires that runs through it is also starting to rub on the insulation. It hasn't rubbed through, but uh, looks like it was installed at some point for whatever reason and it just wasn't put in properly because they had the wires pinched underneath the module there too. So. 
I'm gonna recommend that he gets that. You know, if we can get just the antenna, get that on, get it sealed correctly, get whatever uh, attaching hardware belongs on the inside. We'll have to take this stuff back off, you know, put that on and, and bolt that down. And that way there, he's not getting any more water in here. And, you know, like I said, that module's nice and clean right now. But, you know, is that, you know, gonna be a problem in the future. Uh, also, see if he wants me to figure out what's going on with the interior antenna as to why it's not, you know, detecting the key unless you have it really close to the center console. So, uh, but for now, we did fix the blown fuse problem, uh, which is what he wanted. And uh, <laughs> we also learned how to set up your meter on internal amps instead of low amp clamp probe. If your meter is displaying a number that looks funky, it's probably because it is. I always say, look at your values in here. Practice what you preach there, fella. So I'm going to keep moving on. Uh, if we do any more of this vehicle in the future, I'll try to get a video for you guys and give you updates on it. But for now, it is up and running, and it's no longer has to ride on the back of the flatbed to get from point A to point B. So why don't you guys ride on down there to the comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, concern. While you're down there, subscribe, ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.